It has been one year since I switched over to the Fujifilm camera system, and today I figured it would be a great opportunity to go through my bag, tell you what I like, and maybe some regrets. <laughs> Now before we jump in, know that links to all of this is going to be in the description below. As we go through each item, if something is of interest to you, go ahead and check that out. Those links are affiliate links and help this channel, but don't cost you anything extra. Also make sure to head over to both Twitter and Instagram. Give me a follow on each of those as I share all sorts of content and updates on what's going on. So before we get to the Fuji gear itself, let's talk about the camera bag that I have been using. This is a Brevity rucksack. I have been using this bag for quite a while, a couple of years now. I don't even think they sell this exact model, but they are a wonderful company that are continuing to put out new bags designed specifically for photographers who maybe want a bag that doesn't look like a camera bag. And I know they have a couple different sizes now depending on your needs, so check that out. I love this bag because it has a laptop sleeve. I put my iPad in there. It has places for a tripod. It has a camera insert that can be removable if let's say I just wanna make this a normal backpack. It also has a couple of things where I can put lens caps right on the strap. It has belt straps if I'm on a hike and have more weight in there. It's really a bag that is an all around great bag that has again been with me for a few years now. So let's go ahead and jump into the bag itself. Since we are currently filming this on the iPhone XR, I'm going to jump to the main piece just so we can make a little bit of switch and bump up this production value. Right now I am using the Fuji X-T3 and on it at the moment is the 16 2.8. So at the time that I made the switch from Nikon to Fuji about a year ago, the Fuji X-T3 was their latest model of that X-T series. They now have the X-T4. That is a wonderful camera, but not one that I'm going to upgrade to. If you want to know a little bit more about why, you can check out this video here. And after a year of using this camera, I can definitely say that I don't have any regrets with this. This camera is a workhorse. It fits my needs. I love how compact it is, just the mirrorless system in general. I I am not somebody who has ever used full frame, so I definitely don't miss that because I've never had it before. But it feels good in the hands. I love the dials. I love the, the way the menu is set up and all of the features it provides. For me, I do some sports photography at times and the high frame rates for photos is wonderful. I've done all of the videos here on this channel on this camera, so it meets my needs there. I think everybody knows that battery life on these isn't wonderful, which is why they upgraded it on the X-T4. So that is one area that I wish I could upgrade without upgrading everything else, but that's not really how that works. And then for this lens specifically, the 16 2.8, you'll notice as we go through this, I'm not necessarily one that needs all of the fastest aperture lenses and getting that bokeh. So the 2.8 does plenty for me. It's a wonderful lens to use in landscape photography as it's a 24 millimeter equivalent to full frame and as well as street photography. You do have to kind of get up close to things on the street if you want to make some good street photos, but it is something that I've used and I do have videos on that on this channel. You can check those out as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and switch over to that so we can bump up the production value just a little bit. So now that we have swapped out the cameras, let's go ahead and look at some of the other lenses that I have for the Fuji X-T3. So I do have the kit lens that comes with this camera. This is the 18 to 55. The aperture on this, I believe is 2.8 to F4. So it is a variable aperture. As you zoom in, it does get a little slower of a lens in terms of that aperture. And for me, this is really a filming lens. So a lot of times this is what is on that camera. And a lot of the videos that you've seen are filmed with this lens. It does have optical image stabilization. So if I'm doing handheld, if I'm out somewhere doing video, that comes in handy. And it just gives me a little bit more of flexibility in terms of field of view, as opposed to that prime lens of the 16 2.8, or the next lens, 35 F2. 
and this is probably my most used lens. It is an f2, so it does get relatively wide open. It's equivalent to about a 50 millimeter on a full frame, which is a really standard focal length for photography. And I really love how this feels. I love how it looks on the camera. The balance is great. And most of my street photography is done with this lens. You guys have seen me use this lens a million times. Most of the street vlogs, behind the scenes, point of view type of videos that I do when I am out doing street photography are done with this lens. So I don't have any regrets about this one. I love it. There are times where I wish I had the 23. That is a lens I don't have in this kit. Fuji also has a 23 millimeter F2 that is in this F2 range. They have a whole series of them. And I do think that is one that I am eyeing and want to pick up eventually, although that is probably not gonna happen anytime soon. This is probably my most used lens, so I can definitely recommend this one. Now the last Fuji lens I'm going to talk about is the big one. This is the 50 to 140 f2.8. So this is equivalent to your 70 to 200 on a full frame. It is a pretty big lens, so on the X-T3 it does uh, have more weight on the front, which is why it has, there goes the lens cap. It is why it has its own tripod collar, so if you are putting this on a tripod, it isn't pulling the camera forward. It really helps balance it out that way. But the image quality out of this is amazing. I use this a lot for the sports photography stuff that I've done, as well as headshots, portraits that I do. So it really is able to get tack sharp focus, as well as the consistent aperture of 2.8 does allow you to open up and get a good amount of bokeh and compression with this lens in those portraits and blow out the backgrounds and sports and just those different scenarios that you may want that type of performance. This is also weather resistant, so I don't have to be too concerned. So with the X-T3 body being weather resistant, the 16 millimeter being weather resistant, the 35 millimeter being weather resistant, the, four, the 50 to 140 being weather resistant. Kit lens isn't weather resistant, is it? It's not. I have the three main lenses that I'm using for photography are all weather resistant, which is really key for me as I just don't have to worry about it. Here in Chicago, we get a lot of snow. I don't have to worry about that when I am out doing street photography in the winter, but that does it for the Fuji lenses that I have. Now I do have this adapter, this Photosee adapter that is from Nikon to Fuji. That is for one reason, and that is my film camera. So I have a Nikon FM, and on it I have the Nikon F2. So I am able to take this lens, a 50 millimeter lens, and on an APS-C equivalent to about a 75 millimeter, use this Photosy adapter and get another focal range. Now, this is a fully manual lens and it is not weather sealed or weather resistant, so it does come with some compromises. This is not a speed booster, this, isn't, and this adapter doesn't include autofocus. All it does is allow me to put this lens on that camera and get another focal length which is something I do every once in a while if I want that little bit more of a reach. But at the same time, I'm okay losing some of that sharpness and introducing some of that character of using a vintage lens. Now coming back to this, I use this Nikon FM as my only film camera. I mainly use this for street photography. I take this on trips as well. I recently did a video comparing some of the photos out of this compared to the X-T3 on a recent trip to Florida and you can check out that video here if you're interested. And it just really helps bring me back to slowing down and thinking about the image as opposed to all of the technology that I might have and rely on in this Fuji X-T3. Now, that is the main compartment of this. So this is, again, the camera insert. This can come out if you want it to and open up all this space for whatever you're doing. If you're making this a day pack on a trip and you want to throw a sweatshirt in here, or you want to throw food in here for a hike, whatever it is, you can open up this space instead of having all of your camera gear here. But moving to the front pouch. These are my battery bags. 
Now these are simply makeup bags that my wife had and I used this one to store all of the charged batteries. I have both Fuji batteries as well as some of my action camera batteries which we'll get to in a minute. Once they are charged they go in here. Once I'm out and I have depleted that battery it goes in here. So you can see these are both different colors as well as different sizes so I know exactly what's charged and what's not when I'm out in the field. Next up is my SD card holder. This is not an official Pelican or anything like that. I'm pretty sure I just got this off of Amazon somewhere and I've thrown my own sticker on this for the Fifth Star Band, a local band here in Chicago. Check them out if you haven't already. I have both SD cards and micro SD cards in here. You can see I just use a simple system. If it's upright, it's ready for me to use. I can format that. Everything's been backed up. If it is upside down, you can see that that needs to be backed up and I still need to do some work on those cards. Also in this front pouch, I have hand sanitizer. I have a highlighter, a pen. I use a lens pen for some cleaning. This has both there's two different ends that allow you to clean your lens. I also have um, some microfiber cloths in here and a little air shooter in a different pocket that we'll get to in a minute. That does it for this front pocket. Now let's go to the top. Now right on the outside there is a little pocket here. This I always have some business cards right in here. You never know who you're going to run into, who may be asking, and you always want to have this ready to go. I also use this as a great spot to throw my wallet and phone in case I'm going through an airport and I don't want to have that in my pocket as I'm going through security, but that is just a little pocket up front. Going into this main pocket, there's another pocket in this lid. So I throw a couple of things in here. Like I said, I have this little air rocket thing to help get any dust off of the camera or lenses that may need to just be cleaned up a little bit. I have my bamboo utensils in case you are out at a restaurant or something like that. Obviously be careful these days, but this is something that I carry with me everywhere. This has a fork, a spoon, a knife, chopsticks, and even a glass straw and cleaner. So I throw this in here. It's great to use so you're not wasting plastic utensils out at a takeout restaurant or something like that. And then inhaler, an EpiPen, my own medical things. Um, and sometimes I throw a, another medical bag in here just with like band-aids and aspirin and basic things like that to carry around that you may need out on a trip somewhere. In this top compartment, I kind of just throw some extra things in here and we will start with just this accessory bag. So this is, I don't know where this bag came from. I think it came out of like a toiletry bag or something, but I just throw a couple of things in here. I have different chargers. I have cables. I have my Apple Pencil, which we'll get to the iPad in a minute. I have this SanDisk external SSD. This is 500 gigs and it's great, it's compact. It also has some level of like dust resistance and things. I forget exactly what level, but I know that it's rugged and it's gonna last me a long time. I have again, adapters, backup SD uh, card reader for the iPad. And this is a little adapter for audio going to the Osmo Action. I've now mentioned a couple of things for that, so we'll get to that next. But this allows me to put in external audio and also maintain the USB-C for charging if that's something that I need. When I'm out traveling, there are probably a few more chargers in here, but on the day-to-day, -day, this one stays relatively empty. So like I said, we will get to this Osmo Action next. I do not use GoPros. I have always used alternatives to GoPros. And I used to use SJ cams, I have a couple of them, but they have broken over time. And this is where I've landed is the Osmo Action. I love this camera because it has this front screen. You can flip that on. And when you are vlogging, you can have that looking right at you. You can see what's in frame, what's not in frame. And it's really great uh, little action camera. It's waterproof in and of itself. You can have a water cage to make it even more waterproof to go at deeper levels if you need to. And uh, yeah, I've thrown it on a tiny, cheap little uh, tripod. This is nothing fancy. I don't even know where this came from. Probably had this for a while, but it allows me to go 
and just have a handle for this camera. I also have a bunch of little accessories for this that are not in this bag, but depending on the trip and what I'm planning on doing with it, I will grab some of those. You know, I have a floaty handle for open water and I have the little clips and things that allow me to use it in various ways. One that I do carry with me is this, what I would call a gator clamp. And what this allows me to do is I can put this Osmo Action right here and then I can spin this around. And what I end up doing is this is how I film the POVs and behind the scenes for my street photography. So I'll clip this to the strap of this backpack or a different bag or if I have a jacket on or something, I can clamp this right to my chest in various ways. And then my this Osmo Action is sitting there looking straight forward and getting that behind the scenes. You're seeing what I'm seeing and that's how we make those happen. Moving on is a, another mini tripod. This is the Manfrotto Pixie Mini, I think. I could be wrong on that. But this is a great little tripod. I do a couple of things with this. Sometimes I will throw that Osmo Action on there and just have a little bit better of a grip. I also use this for a phone mount and even throwing the X-T3 on there. It Because it is a relatively small camera and the small lenses in that F2, F2.8 line, it is able to hold it. And so just for little things, if I just wanna pop this up somewhere on a table, or maybe I want to have a handheld if I wanna vlog on this camera or something like that, I can do that. Uh, again, nothing fancy, pretty simple. You can't necessarily put this on uneven ground or wrap it around a tree, like something like a Joby Gorilla Pod, but it is well-designed. I can tell that it's well-made and something that I have definitely put to use since I've picked this one up. Now for a flash system on this X-T3 when I am doing portraits, I use the Godox system. This is the little trigger that goes on top of the camera. I believe this is like the X-Pro X -Pro F, F standing for Fuji. They make this for all sorts of models of cameras so you can find whichever version that works for you. And then in here is the Godox V. 350F, again, F for Fuji. This is very compact. It's a little light, that little speed light that I can put off uh, on the angle that I want it. And sometimes I'll use a soft box depending on where I'm going and I'll bring that. But a lot of times it's just, it's small enough to throw in your bag. If you are doing a wedding, you can pop this out at a reception. If you want to use it on camera, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. And the only downfall to this is that I don't love having, I know this might be a little weird. I think in this type of device, I would want AA batteries or something like that. Um, I don't love having to depend on the reusable or rechargeable batteries of this system. I think it just makes me a little bit more nervous and anxious as opposed to AA batteries always being readily available. And last up is the iPad. This is an iPad 2008. This is the 12.9 inch and it has 256 gigs. I have done a full video on using this and using this as my main device for a photography workflow in terms of backing up, editing, sharing with clients, all sorts of things. So if you want to see that video, again, check that out up in the cards. For me, I do, on this iPad, I do use the Folio keyboard, smart keyboard. I forget exactly what they call it. It is not the magic keyboard. I prefer being able to swing this behind and still use this as a tablet without having to completely take it off of the case itself. And then for me, I know a lot of people complain about the fingerprints and the way that it gets a little smudged at times. For me, I have solved that by putting stickers on it and making it my own. So these are stickers I've picked up from travels and different things that I've been involved with. And so it uh, kind of solves that problem and again, makes it my own. I know it's mine when I see it. I don't put those on the bottom because that's the part that like when you're sitting there, it's there, but um, that is the iPad. So that is what is in my bag. And that is what I'm using one year after switching to Fuji and I don't regret it. I've loved this system. There may be some things that I would tweak. I would probably pick up that Fuji 23 millimeter F2. I've also considered the 90 millimeter F2 and potentially getting rid of this one, but that does mean I would lose some range and things, but it is much more compact of a lens. So maybe I'll make some changes down the road, but right now I am pretty happy with my setup 
and it gets the job done and that is the most important thing. It's not about gear, it's not about uh, having the latest and greatest. As I said, I'm on the X-T3, not the X-T4. I don't have any of the 1.4 or F56, F.2. I don't have any of those lenses. This is probably the only one that I would put in that pro category, uh, the, the 5140 F2.8. Everything else is more accessible, although it is not necessarily cheap. It is more accessible than their other lenses and I get the job done. I have clients, I am able to get paid using this gear and I enjoy it. I am out there doing street photography, I'm doing landscape photography for myself. And again, I enjoy it and that's the most important part. So make sure and give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of my gear down below. Is there something that you would completely swap out? And remember to subscribe and check out the video in the end card. But until the next one, just get started.